As I arrived in the scorching early May heat of Saint-Jean-Pied-de-Port, the air was thick with anticipation, a throng of pilgrims eagerly awaiting their credentials to embark on the Camino de Santiago. It wasn't long before Jim from the Hawaiian Islands rolled into town. We met last year on the Camino and ended up walking all the way to Finisterre. Drawn by the irresistible call of the Camino, we decided to undertake this journey once more. Jim has flown from halfway around the world, leaving the tropical paradise of his island home to walk these ancient roads again. It's the call of the walk. Look who we got here. If it's not Jim, I don't know who it is. Yes, it is him. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> Hi guys! Hey. <laughs> Looking for food. Saint Jean, beautiful. Pilgrims are now in their rooms, eagerly awaiting tomorrow morning when they can conquer the Pyrenees as they do. Another one. Early in the morning, Camino number two, all by myself, no breakfast crew, we'll see what happens. I set out on my second Camino Frances at the crack of dawn into a day that seemed pulled straight from a springtime fantasy. The sunrise over the mountains is nothing short of breathtaking, as if nature wanted to celebrate the arrival of spring. As I begin my ascent along the Route Napoleon, over the Pyrenees mountains, every step is a revelation of beauty. It wasn't long before fate intervened and had me bump into Emily and Evan. Their infectious laughter and effervescent spirits created an instant connection and we decided to conquer the mountain as one an intrepid trio bound by the shared excitement of this journey. In this moment, I'm Fab. <laughs> For when Camino. <laughs> Sorry, he's video on an here we come. Jim joined us at Horizon, having left late. But Jim being Jim, he made quick work of that first <laughs> leg. <laughs> Good morning. We're climbing towards the peak with our fairy companions, wild horses and sheep that look like fluffy clouds on four legs. So, yes, 
nice. We've done 10. Very good. We eventually passed the invisible border between Spain and France and then descended down to Roncesvalles. Bias. We made it across the mountains. Here we are. Long lines of pilgrims at Roncesvalles and some of us without a reservation, but it all worked out in the end. The questionnaire asked me why I walked the Camino and I checked many of the boxes. All those things. Oh, desire. Do we deserve yeah. this? Yeah. Yes. Yes, we do. Yes, it, is. it doesn't change. Day one, new friends. We'll all hate each other. We're ready too. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is a video, so you know. All right. Oh no. Do we look? It's a video. We don't realize. It, it's okay. We all look a little tipsy. Everyone says, always. How is that? I poured the tiniest bit. <laughs> yeah, right. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll get into that. Dinner at Francis Weiss. This is like again with the bed. We're, we're gonna get the We're gonna get it. And didn't we get the bed? <laughs> the communal dinner brought us together, a gathering of kindred spirits united by our shared conquest of the mountains. Tales of triumph over nature's challenges filled the air, each story more captivating than the last. An electric current of anticipation and excitement crackled through the room, for it was evident that our journey had truly begun. We were bound by an invisible thread, a shared vigor that ran through our veins, propelling us onward as one. The sign. Will we do it? 790. A sunny morning and a plentiful breakfast set us on our way to the next destination, Zubiri, or perhaps a town beyond. This would be our last stop before Pamplona, a city rich in history and celebrated for its amazing cuisine. The Camino today could not be more inviting. A crisp morning, the verdant landscape bathed in sunlight, and a long road stretching ahead. Hopeful pilgrims are scattered around the beautiful Spanish scenery their brightly colored backpacks bobbing like boys on the sea of green. Each one seems fresh and brimming with energy, ready to embark on this pilgrimage. Jim and I, swift of foot, are making good time and are covering vast expanses of ground quickly. Francis Valles has faded in our wake, and I'm simply elated to be here.
special feeling, indescribable, permeated the air. The prospect of this long, winding road ahead lent a heightened state of attentiveness and alertness to both mind and body. I took a picture of this very car one year ago, right here. Wait. The trek to Zubiri is mountainous too, if less so than the long climb of the Pyrenees the previous day. Although steeper than it seems in the video, a journey through these lush springtime forests renders any climb or descent a thing of pure transcendent beauty. path that cuts through the verdant trees makes it a rather physical adventure, a small test of endurance and fortitude, like a preparation for things to come. Crossing the old bridge into the village of Zubiri holds the promise of a hearty, well-deserved meal. Entering Zubiri, but by all accounts, we are not the only ones. Wow. So many people. Yet Jim and I press on, our sights set on the next village, where an albergue is renowned for serving a great roast chicken for communal dinner. A few kilometers detour, but a good chicken deserves a detour, does it not? We can get some food here. Some drink too. <laughs> Our path to the village leads us directly past a gnarly mining factory, an industrial behemoth planted in the midst of the pastoral landscape. Its cacophonous rumble assaults our ears, while fumes taint the crisp country air. In its colossal, imposing form, it stands as an ugly scar upon the landscape, a jarring juxtaposition of man's insatiable hunger for resources against nature's delicate splendor. And yet, I find solace in the knowledge that this magnesit extraction plant has but a few years of service left. And the plan is to eventually cover the excavations and renature the area. This is the church being renovated by this guy from England. It's 
So we went off Camino for a kilometer or so for a small albergue after Zubiri, between Pamplona and Zubiri. The beer's delicious. Camino Logistics. Is it? Okay. Yeah. 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 This is our nice albergue. Very nice. Friendly people. Just off the Camino. The town's called Urdanis. It's a motley crew. So, you gotta have air for like other than snoring. Yeah, I like waited to be evacuated by the State Department. Really, you were just stuck. Laundry that dries really quick is great because the opportunity cost of slowly drying laundry is too high. Easy. This tiny albergue is so nice. Flowers, pool, and a nice space to hang out. I love it. Check it out. She gave the damn, she was feeding the skunk. There was two of them. This albergue is awesome. Friendly, great food, great guests. Love it. We've earned it. <laughs> the albergue is a veritable oasis and well worth a detour. Letting this chance for spiritual and culinary enlightenment slip by would be a regrettable oversight. For host Jesus, roast chicken achieves transcendence on the plate. Transcendence by poultry. Okay, estamos grabando. The evening was a delightful affair, and the roast chicken fought valiantly against the raucous laughter of American, Dutch, German and Brazilian pilgrims for control of the evening's ambiance. But tomorrow, the real battle awaits in Pamplona. Heading to Pamplona after this nice albergue experience. It's a misty morning departure for Pamplona on day three of my Camino. It's only a short 16 kilometer hike. All the more reason to take it easy and enjoy the walk. I crossed paths with Bernardo from Brazil again, who I had met at the albergue the night before. I asked him if I could take his portrait for my Camino Portraits project. He said yes, and so did Georgia from New Zealand. In this project, I try to keep a record of pilgrims I encounter. It's a labor of love that I've been working on for a while. It's interesting to see how quickly your body adapts to the constant workout. It's like there's a muscle memory for walking. And it says, I'm made for this. Feels good. I can smell coffee. El café. What the pilgrims want. Coffee, coffee. If you like to follow our Camino adventures, subscribe below and leave a comment if you like. It's only 16 kilometers to Pamplona today. I'm taking it very slow. Take it easy. Take it all in. And chill out.
spring. It's beautiful. It's pretty steep. It's getting warm. Six more kilometers to Pamplona. It's hot, but it's easy and it's nice. Look. That's how it goes with life. Walking into Pamplona. Pamplona. The city wall of Pamplona is so large, it doesn't even fit the frame. Pamplona is alive and kicking. Cathedral, Plaza Cathedral, Albergue, Albergo, Plaza Cathedral, right next to the cathedral. It's very nice. Albergue life. I have no idea why I'm still schlepping that New Yorker with me. There's a huge football match tonight. Cup final. Oh, there's a big football game, but 
now it's starting to rain and everyone's fleeing. We're looking for churros or ice cream. <laughs> I hate to say it tastes like bread. <laughs> bread with <laughs> to let you know even in the future you yeah. have Pamplona on the day after the big football match yesterday. Oh dear. This place looks like it has coffee. So we'll do my place. Bye bye Pamplona. Sunday morning. This is Nicole from the Netherlands. Listen to these awesome machines. Feeling like today is your birthday. Bring it on. Fresh cut tape of new fay. Bring it on. Tie dye every single shade. Bring it on. Catching that ride on the way. My digestive cookies are slowly turning to dust, but I love them anyway. Got me feeling so free, free. Got me feeling so free, free. Like a cool summer rain.
and a half to go. Approaching Puente La Arena. What you see here is a happy pilgrim after a day's work. So Jim booked a beautiful apartment in Puente La Arena again. And here we are on the patio. <laughs> Oh, there's I'm more. Good, good. More people. Oh, I hate being filmed. Hello. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Our stuff is still trying to finish washing. It's taking so long. This is glass. Oh, wow. Isn't it nice? Yeah. Please, your post. I love how it's magic. We just <laughs> changed the bedroom. Put the laundry in. Yeah. Did you just say pegging? <laughs> oh, Not there. <laughs> Puente La Reina. We're doing what we do. The alleyways of Puente La Reina. Cute little town. Trust me. <laughs> Emily's not liking her salad because of crap stuff or something. <laughs> Laughing is not allowed. Having your own room for a night is a very dreamy and very possible scenario. The bay apartment. The old bridge. Puente la Arena. I will cross that bridge when I get to it. And that's now. Camino. Hasta luego, Puente la Arena. It's a new day. I just stepped in dog shit. Must be for good luck. In the name of love. After a good night's sleep, day five starts off with the crossing of the historic bridge in Puente la Arena. The hardest thing on the Camino is often not the walking, but the lack of sleep. I'm well rested for a good day of walking. It's as beautiful a day to walk as any. Spring is in full bloom and the birds are singing for us pilgrims. It's kind of funny, I'm not usually that competitive, but on the Camino, when I see pilgrims ahead of me, I kind of want to catch them and pass them. Especially if there's a steep mountain or incline, I just like charging up that mountain. Some village along the road it says bar, which means coffee. Yeah. Yeah. I would say it's coffee o'clock. Right. Yes. Okay. Okay. Mm. just 16 more kilometers. Very mountainous village. Steep. And back down. Another bridge to cross.
do you need a walking stick or not? I think the stick is kind of like just something to do for your hands. Almost like a cigarette. I don't smoke. But something nice to do. Also gives you rhythm. And when it's steep, it actually helps you balance. But it's not entirely necessary. I think you might just as well go without one. And uh, when I'm taking pictures or videos, it's actually kind of annoying because I also have to sort of see how I hold all these things together at the same time. But yeah, listen to it. It's like a metronome for your walk. Marion from Ireland is over 80 and a fast walker. I later realized she has walked through my videos before I took her portrait. And Michelle traveled all the way from Australia. Yeah, stop depression. I can agree with that. Bridges to cross. Seems to be the theme of the day. Getting closer to Estella. The last quarter of any leg is always the longest. It seems to drag on forever and ever. Just the way it goes. Another one. A bit of shade is good. The back alleys of Estella. It's a bridge, but I ain't crossing it. At least not today. I hear laughter. That laughter sounds like Jim from Kauai. See? I knew it. <laughs> what I love about this place is there's an aisle full of digestive cookies. <laughs> oh, I think I'm going to I'm see moving, I'm moving. <laughs> Move faster. <laughs> I'm running out of footage. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is Stella Hotel. Careful, guys. I'm coming with the camera. Stop kissing. Oh, no. Oh, you're just on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got there? I'm so cute. Oh, that's food. <laughs> 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 mm. Coffee and journal time. It's Teja. Nice little town. Finding my gang. We're here. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's talk about ice cream? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did also invite me to his house at dinner. <laughs> that dog has Watch food. when I get close. Watch out. <laughs> ice cream time. Yes. Woo! Yeah. So way to go. So. I've never seen this part of this day. Yeah, I'm really new. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm really gonna be looking out for you. <laughs> cool. Do you want to put it in this though? I'd happily cool. carry it if you don't. <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so it's, it's in the window. <laughs> Oh my god, leaving us here. But I think morning. Good 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 don't put sound in any of this because it'll be really bad. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. I want the red wine. I want the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. We all like froze for a second and pretended. <laughs> How did I get it? So you're supposed to drink it one, one, one sip. Seashell. Yeah, yeah. I want to so much get a bottle of the Taking the mountain pass route. After the wine fountain. It's more steep, but it's much more pretty. But also, there's almost no one. to finish the Camino all the way to Santiago because um, very good friends of mine are getting married and the celebration is in the way kind of so I want to do both I want to finish it and I want to go to that wedding of course I'll decide later I can't make up my mind it's one tough question How long have you been here? Two hours? <laughs> Digestive dust. Yeah, but super yummy, like the bottom. This, of course, is Evan from Ireland, whom you've seen before and you'll see again. And this is Edison from the US. Please note the water bottle filled with red wine from the wine fountain. By now, you probably know Jim from Kauai. And there I am, the guy usually behind the camera in the colors of Ukraine.
The rain is here. What? A little abode in Los Arcos. Jim, book this for me. That's Tara. <laughs> just reach out next time, okay? That's good. I'll get you to take care of it. And I'll be like, just here's my money. <laughs> Hello, Pedro. I'm not good. No, I'm not either. That's why I'm happy like. Peaceful Los Arcos. Hiking the hills of Los Arcos see the city from above, what it has to offer. It's a nice view. I like it. Have some cookies. Life is good. Emily just can't stop hiking. It's a problem that needs to be solved. I'll bet you a hundred bucks the pilgrims are sitting there drinking sangria. <laughs> drinking sangria, yes, it's true. <laughs> oh, why, 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 did, why did you get two? <laughs> <laughs> First, yeah. Dehydrated. Cheerio. They are delicious. like in small bits. We need this place. It's, it's warm. It's warm. Sorry. <laughs> so we did end up in this thing. It got noticeably colder, and it took us a while to find a place to have a big, hearty dinner. And boy, did we need it because it just burned so many calories. And the next day, we're looking at 28 kilometers to Legronio. Los Arcos to Legronio, some 28 kilometers. Started off with coffee. There it is, cooking coffee. Breakfast. On day seven of my second Camino Frances, we left Las Arcos early in the morning on a beautiful sunny day. And although it got noticeably colder, the landscape was just as beautiful as ever. Unfortunately, the gray would win over again as we approached Legronio.
truck or something coming up. And here it is. Having the Tara getting the good stuff. What started a bit chilly this morning turned into what I would call perfect walking conditions. 17 degrees, a few clouds and a light breeze. I had made quick work of that tortilla. As we approached Logroño, the grey seemed to have won over again. I remember the city as a bustling summer city. Now it's cold and almost empty. It's a special moment, as I say. <laughs> Thankfully, we had rented a very cute apartment, which made the temperature a little more bearable. I know! My house! It's cute! Yeah, it's a cute little place. Zeus. That's where we're staying. Having coffee here. And I'm very worried about the coming days because of the weather. If it gets cold, it's already cold. Then Houston, I have a problem. I found my. <laughs> oh, yeah! Did you? Yeah. When I was a page. What did you think it was? It was purple. <laughs> <laughs> is pretty, but it feels different than last time because it's colder, much colder. There's a table with a lot of laughing. Why are we not like fighting with birds? I think so. Jim ordered six of his 12 sandwiches. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god, sorry. Sorry, I'm so old. Okay. <laughs> Someone handed me this. Fried pork belly. Yes, already. Maze balls food. Maze. What's great about the larger cities that you hit every couple of days is you can really dive into the amazing food that they offer. It's a feast, and you're so hungry, and it's so delicious. Logroño. 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 
Great stay at Cathedral Home Suite. Great night's sleep. But I got really chilly today. We'll see about that. Leaving Rogania. Big city of dreams. Evan had the right idea to go salty. <laughs> <laughs> As I keep walking, I become more aware of the hidden movement of goods, people, and stories beneath the surface. Today's itinerary takes me through an industrial area, which isn't as pretty, but interesting all the same. As I walk past road construction, huge machines, and the people operating them, I see the enormous efforts that go into the things we take for granted. These roads we casually drive on, barely noticing how they're made only show their true size when you walk along them. But even as I admire the greatness of the road, a part of me is sad about what's lost when the landscape is permanently changed. The patches of grass, streams and forests that are now buried under the constant push for progress. It hurts to see such damage done to the beauty of the land. While the road connects us, it also separates us from the natural world that keeps us alive. I keep walking with my heart split between amazement and sadness, thankful for what the road gives us, but also mourning what it takes away. The little town of Navarrete, just passing through. A bit of an industrial walk today. Not so easy on the eye. As I walk along the Camino, winding through Spain's agricultural heart, I'm surrounded by the abundance of the land, food that will end up on tables all over the world. But the process of getting this food from the fields to our plates is more complicated than it seems. It requires sophisticated logistics and the hard work of many. And it occurs to me that we're all connected to each other in ways we don't often think about. The Camino shows me that our lives are linked with those of people we will never meet. Twenty kilometers later, Café con Leche. Like I said, so Evan got here as well. He's checking his yummy calamari. What are, what, what are you checking, yo? Yo, <laughs> MTV crepes. <laughs>
there are storm clouds ahead and they look pretty spectacular. I love this kind of light, it's my favorite light for, for the video. So I don't mind getting rained on, it looks amazing. It's a total nature experience. I'll take it. Jacket back on. All right. Yeah, it's raining. This downtown Nahara, it's bumping. Nahara. Our apartment is somewhere down the street. Don't even film it. Sorry, do it, do it again. You have to do it again. Was it? This was a consequence of not. <laughs> it's on video. <laughs> <laughs> this was not All of our mistakes on. So this is my room. Oh, Troublemakers are all here. Is chief troublemaker. What are you doing? Why? <laughs> Why not red wine? I love it. <laughs> Oh, it's such a big oh. oh my god, you not have to this! Crazy, my poor team. Oh my god. Elangelo del Camino. He looks like the devil. <laughs> I'm excited for this, you What's know? What's going on here? Cooking. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. We don't think we have ice. Just, just coke and wine. Oh, sorry. This is happening. Mm -hmm. We took a big apartment in the kind of nondescript town of Nahare and feasted on a homemade dinner. I was the nuisance with the camera in the kitchen, but I made up for it by eating more. Uh, yeah. 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 Look at this dinner. Look at it. I'm gonna eat it. I'm gonna eat it soon. God. <laughs> we spent a great evening together at the apartment with great food and lots of laughs and amazing conversations. Leaving Nahara. It's kind of early and it's kind of cold and it's kind of rainy. It's about 7.30. I'm looking at the big sky. It's probably gonna rain down on me in a moment. I'll be wet. Yeah, the sheep agree. Anyway. The Camino is known for lifting pilgrim spirits as they walk through gorgeous landscapes and connect with fellow walkers. Yet even in this idyllic setting, I can feel the effects of seasonal affective disorder. As I walk the Camino on this grey, overcast day, I'm struck by how my mood sinks in tandem with the clouds above. When clouds veil the sun, my inner glow fades too. Though surrounded by natural splendor, I cannot seem to shake the melancholy fog that has taken a hold of my walk. I, I walk uh, six kilometers north, north to, to Grañón. In Grañón there are two and this friendly fella right here is Nestor from Colombia. He has walked a few Caminos already. This is small breakfast. Hey Nestor. Hi. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. <laughs> Where usually I feel lighthearted and optimistic for the day's trek, today each step feels a little forbidding. The scenery I would normally find charming strikes less of a nerve. I miss the sun on my face and I'm disheartened to feel so dependent on something I cannot control. Yet, try as I might to shake off this melancholy, it clings tenaciously. This fickleness of mood troubles me, revealing the extent of my bondage to forces beyond my control. Such sensitivity to conditions would be comical were it not so tyrannical. 
What business has mere weather over my well-being? Like a damp chill that won't lift, old habits of thought still cling stubbornly to my mind. I sometimes sense a reptilian nature in myself, an ectotherm demanding outside sources of light and warmth to stabilize my bodily and spiritual state, much as a crocodile exposes itself to the sun. Hiking the Camino is like gazing into a sharply focused mirror that illuminates our innermost selves. Try as I might to stay upbeat, I'm learning I cannot escape my own biochemistry even here. This place is disturbingly sad. I don't even know what it's called. I don't even know if it has a name. It's full of life. It's a ghost town. A desolate ghost town. You can golf and you can die. I met these two nice guys from Germany at the edge of a desolate ghost town. Joachim, an experienced hiker, was accompanying Lothar, his father-in-law of over 80 years, whose lifelong dream it was to walk the Camino. Good riddance, Sirena, or whatever you call it. No one needs you. I've come to see my spirit is bound by nature's rhythms, like all her creatures. Though a blow to pride, perhaps this wisdom can breed humility to forces greater than my own. At least, that's what I say to myself. On drab days, I must meet myself with kindness, trusting my inner radiance will outlast the clouds. This journey shows we're all vulnerable to external forces, and there's liberation in accepting our fragility. For now, I'll walk through the mist, hoping to find my way forward to brighter days ahead. I know the Camino will lead me from shadow to radiance once more. Until then, I'll follow the way as always. Keep walking one step at a time and trust the Camino will work its magic. <laughs> Our leader is scouting the apartment. <laughs> this is an apartment with many rooms in an art style. Yeah. Where are you moving in? I'm going to take, I don't know, this one. There's another one. There's another one. And then some. <laughs> wow. Damn! Look at the couch! Woohoo! Looking for a coffee in Santo Domingo because coffee is what I need. Yeah. Yeah, do it. <laughs> Look how much this chocolate they give you for this. It's like, the it's way. It's meant to be like a hot chocolate. <laughs> yeah. But I'm paying like that. Oh, is it a video or is it a real uh, video? We're oh. <laughs> all like freezing. The goes up. So, we have food. <laughs> <laughs> Santo Domingo de la Calzada in the morning. It is cold. Here comes the sun. <laughs> we need it. And I need it so badly because we're getting depressed without it. Oh, yeah, I already am. <laughs> Town called Breakfast. This is a nice breakfast place. Nice, not too far. I have three, four, and three love every day. What size for coffee? This is good breakfast. 
round two with what must be Earth's flattest croissant. As the day progressed on our walk to Belorado, the weather decided to take a sunny turn, even if a bit cold. So there's some hope we won't see a week of rain ahead, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. All it takes is a few hours of sun to lift the spirits a little and gather new strength. Beauty of the Camino. I can't believe you. I can't believe you. Oh, go, go. <laughs> oh, oh. 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 Nothing happened. It's going to change everything. This will be my hotel for tonight. That's my little hotel room. It's all simple, but it's mine and I can sleep before the 50 kilometer walk tomorrow. I will pack the essentials into a day pack and get the rest of my stuff shipped via Jaco Trans. Having eight or nine kilos off your back will make the 50 kilometers much easier. Uh oh. Belorado. Belorado is happening. I will go to that supermarket and get cookies. This is where the magic happens. Okay, I'm ready for tomorrow. 
Very good. Thumbs up. <laughs> so uh, Vincent and I are doing a tasting of yeah. digestive oats chocolate. With, with chocolate. This, this is a big one for me this because... Is a, this is a big day. Cheers. Cheers. <gasps> okay. oh, is it my favorite? No. No. It's good, but I don't think I can do like a whole pack of it. It's I like think capital I, G great. Yeah. I stick to the just straight no trace. But still, it's pretty good. I'm gonna have another yeah. one. Here they are. Yes. Cheers. This is big meat. <laughs> the bill comes down to around 15 euros per person. That's quite reasonable for a big dinner with wine. The weather forecast is still foreboding. A lot of gray rain clouds and low temperatures. I'm a little worried to tell you the truth. Northern Spain can be tricky this time of year. But when you're surrounded by good friends, everything's gonna be fine one way or another. We're in this together. So I've decided to ditch the stick. I really like it. It's the best stick you can imagine. But then again, I really don't need it that much. It's often in the way when I want to take pictures or video which is very often. So I'm gonna go freehand from now on and hopefully someone else will need the stick. Bye, stick. On the 11th day of our Camino, we began our hike from Belorado at 5.45 in the morning in misty weather and chilly temperatures with the goal of reaching Burgos some 50 kilometers ahead. We wasted no time and increased our walking speed to beat the cold and warm up our bodies. It was cold enough that our breath was visible in the air. As we ventured deeper into the open space, I once again encountered Jochen and Lothar, familiar faces from the previous day's portraits. This place had good breakfast. We stopped for a greasy, protein-packed breakfast, reveling in every single calorie as we knew we would need the energy. A long hike such as this one is an interesting thing. The kilometers drop faster if your mind is set on the fact that you'll be covering a lot of them. The rapid succession of kilometers covered becomes significantly more manageable when one's focus lies firmly on the immensity of the distance yet to be conquered. Suddenly, 10 kilometers feels like a breeze and 20 kilometers becomes a leisurely stroll. The misty weather adds a mysterious beauty to the forest, creating a spellbinding landscape reminiscent of a fairy tale. The path is sometimes muddy and slippery, adding a taste of adventure. Even on a gray day, witnessing the blossoming resurgence of nature during the season of spring is an awe-inspiring spectacle. As to why I chose to do the Camino again, the Camino has lingered persistently in my thoughts, maintaining a constant presence at the edge of my consciousness. That first pilgrimage left an indelible mark upon my spirit, its beauty and profound impact forever etched in my memory. Even in my sleep, the Camino manifested itself through recurrent dreams, a testament to the enduring hold it possessed over me. Despite this, I felt a sense of trepidation, a hesitation to revisit the sacred ground of my initial magical experience. Then one day, Jim, a friend I made on that first Camino, reached out and asked if I wanted to join him on a second journey that he was planning. Jim's nudge made the decision easy for me. And now here I am, walking the Camino for a second time. About three hours in, we discovered a place to snack and grab some much needed coffee. 
Caffeine and sugar, essential ingredients for our stamina, revitalized us and pushed us onward on our journey. As we continued, we came across a weary wild horse, adding to the mystical atmosphere on a mountainous adventure. So this is where we stayed last year. It's about 25 kilometers from Delorado, but we're gonna breeze straight through all the way to Burger. <laughs> During a break, we run into Bernardo from Brazil again, a heart surgeon I had nicknamed Dr. Beat when we first met on that second night at that albergue with the great roast chicken. I, I'm like, I'm like you. <laughs> Short break over. Now we're gonna hit that mountain and drop into Bugaras. And before you know it, we're over that last hill and we can see Burgos on the horizon. Which doesn't mean we're anywhere close to it, however. It's still a long walk ahead. We're starting to feel a little sore too. There's only so much your body can take. Banana for size? It's huge. <laughs> it's an odd thing. Chocolate and bread and big. Approaching Burgos, you traverse the city's industrial zones and urban sprawl creating a sudden contrast and abrupt dissonance after being in nature for so long. Walking alongside a tire factory and its acrid emissions sharply contrasts with the clean air we have been breathing in the wilderness. Remembering this questionable experience from the previous year, we decided to find the alternative route that takes us southwest of the airport. It was a bit tricky to locate and involved a detour, but we were determined to take that path. Mm -hmm. 
The vastness of the airport becomes apparent as we walk its length, a reminder of the disparity between humans and technology. It took us about an hour to walk by it, while an airplane could cover it in just a few seconds. Interestingly, we passed the 42-kilometer marathon mark as we walked by the runway. There's a river by which we will swim into Burgas. And down there. Exploring a city on foot reveals its true scale. After leaving the outskirts of Burgos, it felt like an eternity to reach the city center. After such a long journey, the few remaining kilometers seemed endless, testing our endurance. Donde esta la cerveza? No, nowhere. Getting close. Getting close. I'm Not excited. close enough. Where goes? Where are we? She's over this. She's <laughs> just. You don't want to see the garden. <laughs> After we arrived at our destination, it was obvious that walking anymore was out of the question. Thankfully, we have three rest days ahead of us. Our first priority was finding food and enjoying a well deserved cerveza. Emily, you like it? You like the city or what? Come on. Do you want to you eat in this place in the corner over here? I hear it's decent. Yeah. Really? You're home. Oh, smile! <laughs> <laughs> Reviewing your workout tracking data on your iPhone can evoke a sense of accomplishment. But to be frank, do these statistics really matter? Sure, completing a 51 kilometer walk is an achievement. However, what truly matters is the overall experience rather than the activity tracked by our devices. We maintained an average walking pace of five and a half kilometers an hour, even when traversing mountains, which is quite respectable for this distance. While I consider myself a fast walker, Jim is in a league of his own. It is nearly impossible to keep up with him during long distances. Most pilgrims might argue that the Camino is not a race, and that is true. However, it undeniably requires a high level of physical endurance, and from time to time it is intriguing to test our limits. When one's mind is set on covering a 50 kilometer distance in a day, it is possible to achieve that goal even if it means walking continuously for nine and a half hours. So my bag's already there. I love it. It's astonishing how your body yearns for food following such a demanding hike. And at Pizza Competencia, where every two euro glass of wine includes a delicious slice of pizza, we successfully satisfied our hunger. After this demanding walk, we pretty much collapsed. And the following day, the remaining members of our group trickled in, and our gang reunited. Burgos remained chilly, and it was clear that I had not packed enough layers to keep warm. Adding more layers of clothing helped, but it didn't completely solve the issue. To be honest, the days in Burgos felt like an Arctic expedition. 
We satisfied our post-walk cravings by indulging in churros dipped in rich chocolate, numerous cups of coffee, ice cream, and of course, amazingly delectable pinchers. Hey, I need a photo real quick. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. Wait, I love that. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Wait, that, that means that like. We settled on Pancho restaurant for our group dinner, relishing a delicious and generous Spanish feast. Communal Camino dinners are always a fantastic time. And then like 10 minutes later, we're asking for a band in the church. <laughs> Oh, uh, black pudding, no, 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 black pudding. We thought that was the like emotional cross where you're stuck. It's not. No, no, The city takes on a different character when the sun is absent. Even the stores seem to close earlier, including the fantastic ice cream shop I had fond memories of. Nevertheless, our craving for ice cream persisted, leading us to a fast food chain for a late night ice cream fix. It was a much better option than going without ice cream entirely. Oh my god. If you listened to me, I would have called you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this, this is one too many. One too many. All right, we'll tell them to take it back. Another morning in Burgos. It's nice to be there. Life can be so fast. During our three-night stay in Burgos, we took the opportunity to explore this beautiful city, just as we did last year. It's a fantastic way to spend time and a welcome change from the permanent walking. The significant difference this time is the biting cold and my clothing proved inadequate for the chilly temperatures. I have no choice but to rush back indoors to escape the cold, trying to stay warm. Getting some pictures. We gathered at local bars for drinks because, as the saying goes, a little alcohol can warm you from the inside. However, none of us was exactly brimming with energy. The weather forecast indicated that the cold would continue. 
As the final night in Burgos came to an end, it became clear that both Evan and Jim would need to leave us early, meaning Burgos was the end of the road for them. This was unexpected and a significant and melancholic blow to our group. There was a sense that our Camino unit could unravel without Jim, our driving force, and Evan, our permanent fountain of positivity. Tomorrow would mark a cut and the beginning of a noticeable change in our Camino. How will this change affect us? Feel free to subscribe and keep following along if you're eager to discover what the Camino has in its future for us. The Camino always presents unexpected twists and turns, and embracing the unexpected is a fundamental aspect of this extraordinary pilgrimage. So long, Burgos. Goodbye, Jim. <laughs> See ya. See ya. As the sun rose over Burgos, our departure was stained by the sudden loss of two comrades, their arms cut off from a collective body. Jim and Evan, who had to leave early, are no more. The group, once a unified whole, now scattered into lonely figures against the vast canvas of the Camino. The gap left by our companions mirrored the bleak emptiness of the meseta that awaited us, a terrain dreaded and admired by many for its existential challenges. It would give me plenty of time to think. As I leave behind the city and the noise, I feel the strong attraction of the wilderness that awaits. Nature has always spoken to me in a way that nothing else can. The contrast between the concrete jungle and the empty plains of the Meseta is stark and profound, making this windy transition particularly opportune. I am looking forward to the upcoming 31 kilometer stretch to Hontanas, a pilgrimage within a pilgrimage. A timely meditation on the transience of companionship and the fragile balance of our connections. This abrupt loss serves as a powerful reminder to not take relationships for granted. What we cherish can vanish instantly. Saying goodbye to these dear friends has left its mark emphasizing the priceless significance of the connections established on the Camino. But it is ironic that I face these questions in this barren landscape, this desolate wasteland. Perhaps it is a sign, a test, a challenge, to confront the impermanence of life, to accept the change, to embrace the solitude. The vastness of the horizon, the isolation of the road, the wind in my ears, All these amplify the echoes of my thoughts. Jim is gone, the engine that kept us together, the glue that bonded us. I fear that our group will fall apart, that we will lose each other. Evan's infectious laughter, his joy and his spirit are missing. Our Camino family is in danger. We walk alone, exposed, vulnerable, in the bright and windy day. But this is also the beauty of the Camino, Things can change suddenly, unexpectedly, for better or for worse. To make room for something new, something different, something unknown.
So we're now entering the Meseta. It's much more barren and less pretty. It doesn't try to be pretty. It doesn't try to please your eye all the time. But that's what makes it interesting. You have a lot of time to just let your mind wander and look at the wide open plains and the not so pretty villages. A couple of days of this. I'm looking forward to it. The Camino de Santiago is a journey of rhythms and of movements. I compare it to an accordion, an instrument of sound and air. Pilgrims start out together in Saint-Jean-Pied-de-Port, forming a harmonious group, moving in sync across the land. But this harmony does not last. It changes and starts breaking. Pilgrims walk at their own speed, some faster, some slower. The accordion expands and contracts, creating gaps and compressions. The Camino is a succession of encounters, of intersections, of separations. Some pilgrims stay with me for a long time, becoming friends, companions, confidants. Others are like ghosts, appearing and disappearing, leaving no trace. Faces that I recognize but do not know, passing by me, greeting me, and leaving me. Buen Camino, they say, like sailors in the dark. The Camino is a journey of many steps and many stories, unfolding like a living novel, an accordion of connections, alive and breathing, where every step resonates with the deep and fleeting beauty of the pilgrim's path. The Meseta is not a place, but a state of mind. As I walk on this endless flatness, I feel myself becoming smaller and smaller, while the world around me grows larger and larger. The sky is vast and merciless, the land is barren and silent, the wind is cold and relentless. I walk faster on this terrain, but I also slow down in my mind. There is less beauty to admire, less variety to enjoy, less life to share. I go deeper into myself, into my thoughts, into my emotions. I go deeper into the Camino itself, the journey and its spirit. These long stretches of nothingness bring out the Camino's spiritual side. And suddenly, a drop in the plain reveals a hidden oasis village, Hontanas. At the town's entrance lies a fine albergue and it so happens that Tara, Gabrielle and Addison will make it here today as well. Grateful that we can reunite, few that we are, we share the only available room, one of us sleeping on a mattress on the floor for a lack of beds. That's fine. We enjoy a glorious shower after the long walk, followed by a communal dinner with a giant paella and a delicious dessert. Chillax in at the albergue after that easy 31 kilometer walk. This is a view of Fontana's downtown. Santa Brigada, super nice stuff, good food, nice accommodations. I'll be back. Tara, mm. Gabrielle, mm. here we are in, what's this called? Santa Brigada, <laughs> something, something. It's the nicest, place it's the nicest At least we, we really made it look like there was just a nuclear explosion. Yeah, it was, we partied really <laughs> hard. <laughs> True, true, true. I like it. And tell us. Yeah. I'm 
Tanis. I'm leaving you now. It was nice. My favorite albergue. 457 kilometers to go. I was very optimistic and opted for shorts. Although it's 5 degrees, but I have this crazy theory that in an hour or two it will be warm. We walked along endless fields of poppies, where the red petals glowed like embers scattered on the green rolling hills. They're a dazzling sight, but also a sorrowful reminder of the fragility of life, for they are destined to perish as soon as we reach for them. We can only look at them. In the act of taking possession, poppies wilt at once. Like a fleeting dream, they vanish once severed from their root. No capturing what only lives in liberty. Here now, gone in a moment. We humans crave for permanence, for things that remain. We want to cling to what we love, to make it ours forever. But the puppies are teaching us a different lesson. In their ephemeral, radiant and evanescent beauty, they reflect the transience of friendships. Camino friendships can blaze bright and strong, yet briefly, as wild puppies do. These red flowers mirror such connections in their vivid evanescence. Friendships forged on the Camino can be like the comets that streak across the sky, leaving only a trail of light behind, or they can last forever. There is the story of Ovidio Campo, a pilgrim turned guardian of the 14th century ruins of San Anton Convent. His pilgrimage to Rome in the year 2000 led to the fulfillment of a dream, the creation of a free, austere refuge for pilgrims, the San Anton Pilgrim Hospital. In the desolate expanse of the Meseta, the wind bears down with an icy determination questioning the wisdom of my choice to wear shorts. Thus, I am quite cold by the time I reach my first coffee stop. And so I warm up a bit and add more layers of clothing, a feeble shield against the merciless gusts. The treeless plains offer no shelter from the wind. This gives the landscape an air of desolation akin to the wild west, a vast canvas beneath boundless skies. The Meseta unfolds as a panorama of majesty, an unbroken visual ode to solitude. Nature stages a silent spectacle as we cross the land. The wind, like a sculptor, carves patterns in the fields. Shifting clouds cast shadows on the ground, and together they appear to dance in sync with the wind in a large-scale choreography of nature. paint a vibrant mosaic of colors, a fleeting burst of life against the historic backdrop. The spring flowers by the roadside are a constant source of beauty. We seem to be on some other planet. Indeed, are we truly still in Spain?
plodding through two horse towns where sunlight and wind reign supreme. Even the Café Con Leche is an unremarkable affair. Everything is kind of below average, except the imposing landscapes beyond the ordinary. Without pilgrims, would these settlements survive or would they be left to succumb to decay without the revitalizing impact of the Camino? The Meseta is also where buses unload Camino day trippers, luggage carried ahead, their origins and destinations a mystery. While they may add, I walk the Camino to their bucket list, the Camino is more than a mere item on a travel itinerary. It is a profound experience that needs to unfold fully. And yet the white meseta, stoically devoid of judgment, welcomes all pilgrims. Here, amidst the sweeping plains, the essence of the Camino transcends checkboxes and itineraries, inviting a deeper connection with the journey itself. Maybe a day trip will inspire a tourist to walk the whole thing. In the end, the Camino is an enigma that eludes attempts to capture it, almost like poppies. A reality beyond observation, narration or recording. No video can convey its depth and no matter how hard I try, I know that my records are pale and incomplete. The Camino can only be experienced. It is a journey that offers both companionship and solitude, an opportunity to examine oneself and to discover new things or simply to walk for a very long time. No one who hasn't walked will understand what you experienced. You don't need a reason, just going is enough. Humans are born to walk and you are always in the place you are meant to be. The Camino may not give you what you want, but it will give you what you need. After a long, solitary walk, I arrive in the humdrum town of Fromista, ready to get some chocolate for tomorrow's trek. The local shops display glimpses into the locals' livelihood, a curiosity that always holds some unexplained interest for me. Local supermarkets are kind of fascinating. Maybe for Mr. it's just a one horse town after all. That's my hotel for tonight. So that's the old room. I booked two, I got three, and I'm solo. Chilling, doing the drama, hanging out. From Mister, it's happening. In 
from Ista, I had communal dinner with new people. It's good to sometimes break your routine. I enjoyed a greasy, salty and delicious dish of black pudding, followed by a giant serving of ribs. Just what my body needed. I was ready for the next day, a long 38 kilometer walk. So if you want to bear witness to that long trek tomorrow, stay tuned, leave a comment if you like, and see you there. So long for Mr. From Mr. In the morning. The morning birds are performing a symphony of chirps, as if to bid me farewell before my 38-kilometer trek across the flat Spanish plains. I'm walking from Promista to Calzadilla de la Cueza, straight across the Meseta, Spain's barren land mostly spared from human encroachment. The splendid morning sun bathes the landscape in golden light creating a colorful spectacle with long shadows that amplify the vast vacancy. The awakening landscape resounds with vibrant life, its restless air testament to nature's wonder. It's a new day. But this bliss is soon interrupted by a loud group behind me, talking incessantly, oblivious to the quiet wonder and mystery. They feel invasive, as if feeding on my solitude and silence. After some effort, I leave them behind, though they tenaciously try to catch up. I'm now firmly in the Meseta, and my intuition hasn't failed me. I thought there was a sense of separation in the air. And with Jim leaving and Evan leaving too, I had a feeling that the group would kind of disperse. And it's doing it. We are just a loose collective of people at this point, which is fine. You know, everybody wants to do their own thing and um, different rhythms, different focus. And it's perfect for the Meseta to just walk alone in these vast landscapes. It's intense and it's interesting. The funny thing is, my first Camino I thought would be this solo, lonely thing where I would do a lot of thinking and all that stuff. And it turned into this very social adventure. My second Camino started off very social as well, but it's now turning into something completely different. And I like it. It's new, it's interesting. And as always, the Camino doesn't give you what you want, but what you need. So here we go. I am still tortured by a persistent dilemma as I near the halfway point. Should I continue to Santiago or abandon my journey to attend my friend's spontaneous wedding? There's no easy answer. The distance to Santiago is too far to make both. I am four days short. But to end early feels like a betrayal of faith and purpose. Yet to miss their wedding feels like a failure of friendship. My only option is to push myself to the limits of endurance and walk consecutive 50, 60 kilometer days with little rest, less joy and companionship. But this would mock the Camino spirit and isolate me from fellow pilgrims. This conflict keeps tormenting me. So after a 20 kilometer walk, finally a decent bar, restaurant, breakfast place, something, something. Anyway, I know I will have breakfast now and 
coffee and all the things. Yeah, the coffee of desire. The breakfast bells are ringing. I'm ringing back. Here's the first part of my breakfast, tostada with jam, because this is my jam. And it might be followed by tortilla. I add salt to my coffee. It makes it better. And there's a tortilla that I mentioned. To be frank, it looks pretty boring. Uh, we'll see if it tastes good. I'm still processing the dissolution of my Camino family. And the truth is, as simple as this walk may seem, you get up, walk, eat, sleep, the Camino persists as an enigma, defying expectations. No matter how prepared you believe yourself to be, it will surprise you. The Camino possesses an uncanny ability to sense expectations and read our mental maps of the journey, then delighting and tearing them to shreds. With a mind of its own, it unveils the unexpected just when you think you have figured it out. You may assume you grasp what the Camino offers, but it knows better than to simply fulfill your wishes. This deliberate appending of expectations is no coincidence. I believe it is a pedagogical intervention. In its enigmatic wisdom, the Camino recognizes expectations often serve as shackles, preventing us from fully embracing the experience. It pushes us outside comfort zones, forcing us to confront the unfamiliar with curiosity and surrender to the unexpected. The Camino teaches us to let go, embrace the fluidity of life, accept changing plans and find beauty in the unfolding journey itself. With its unpredictable twists and turns, chance encounters and transformative moments, the Camino is a masterclass in managing expectations. Welcome the unexpected, embrace the surprises, and allow the mysterious journey to unfold. The Camino is a direct metaphor for the Tao, the ancient Chinese philosophy teaching harmony with the natural order. Tao means the way, the literal translation of Camino. It is the indescribable source of existence, only to be experienced, a way of being, like the Camino itself. The Tao embodies Wu Wei, effortless action, like flowing water that adapts to its riverbed. Wu Wei is acting as the wind, moving freely, sowing seeds of life. This pilgrimage epitomizes the paradoxical Wu Wei, which is not non-action, but action without effort or force, a state of harmony with the natural flow. The Camino and Tao teach a universal lesson. Life is the journey, not the destination. By letting go of attachments and expectations, we can embrace the present moment's reality and truth. By following our intuition and the wisdom of fellow travelers, we can enjoy the beauty of the unfolding journey. As Lao Tse said, life is a series of natural changes. Don't resist or create sorrow. Let reality be a reality. Let things flow naturally. The Tao and the Camino seem kindred spirits to me, though I have found little exploring their connection. I'm keen to hear your perspective on how these philosophical twins align. So please leave a comment below and tell me what you think. After an endless walk, Calzadilla de la Cueza suddenly emerges from the ground like a mirage. It looks like a Western movie set with weary travelers instead of cowboys. I remembered a nice albergue from last year.
To my delight, Emily has also arrived at this remote outpost. There's only one restaurant where everyone ends up. Ravenous after the long walk, we eat substantial portions and drink simple but fine red wine. A man at our table collapses, pale-faced with eyes closed. Emily, who is a doctor, rushes over, diagnosing dehydration and exhaustion. We explore the town, meet a few local cats, and then it's off to bed to rest up for tomorrow's 33 kilometers walk to Bastianos. So, big dinner with, you know, lots of food. Breakfast is being made. It's two degrees Celsius. And I'm hanging out. Adios, quesadilla de la queso. Now. Sorry. <laughs> Day 17. It's two degrees Celsius. Pretty cold. But I just walked faster. And it's a good 33 kilometer walk today. On a beautiful clear day. So that should do it. Two more from our group have caught up, so there's a bit of a group thing again, which is great. And uh, we're gonna meet up in Bessianas, see what that's like in that little town. Walking out the door in the morning in those small villages is always amazing because you hear the birds and all the animals doing their thing. Sons of nature. It's a different from the big city. And I keep thinking about the Camino and what I'm trying to say about it that hasn't been said a thousand times already. It's very easy to fall into the trap of cliché and I hope I don't, but the reality is, I'm sure sometimes I do. The thing is, it comes down to your individual experience of it. And that will be different for everyone. Even though the common art of what the Camino is, what the experience is, is probably a little similar for everyone. Walking for that long, for so many days on end, does something. Walking is great to clear your head and for thinking because fresh air, blood circulation, 
nature of that will allow you to really think or even not think, which is great. After two weeks of doing this, your regular life seems far away. And it's all the better for it. Even if your life is great, but you're just in this own bubble of the Camino. One thing I really need to learn is to build up a tolerance for large groups behind me that are yakking away at a high volume. It's pretty annoying, to be honest. Maybe I will never build up the tolerance. Just shut up. The walk takes me along the edge of the mostly vacant freeway. It's odd seeing this massive, perfectly adequate infrastructure idling unused. I spot the first signs for Leon, the upcoming rest days city I'm looking forward to. Just another 73 kilometers, the sign says. This hour-long drive is a two-day pilgrimage on foot. Isn't that the point, though? The deliberate deceleration of the relentless race through our lives. Today, I saw a scribbled message on one of the blue signs that marked the province of Castilla y León, reading, the future is uncertain and the end is always near, so let's live. Indeed, how simple and how wise. The Camino reminds us of this urgent truth. The future is unknown and death inevitable, but life is here and now and beautiful. The Camino's intentional pace and immersion in living forces us from frenetic routines to appreciate the simple beauty of the present. It reminds us that life is not a race to win, but an act of living fully, of painting our existence with color, compassion, love and wonder. As the graffiti says, the future is uncertain and the end always near. Let us live now fully with heart and soul. Waiting for my mixed salad, and they gave me this. Now look at that. It's a salad. You may notice a fixation with food in my videos. When you commit to this pilgrimage, your body morphs into a perpetually famished beast. The long treks across endless countryside, the temperamental terrain, the relentless weather. It awakens bottomless hunger. This craving consumes, demanding fuel for the road ahead. The first meal is usually humble, a piece of bread with jam and coffee, occasionally a tortilla or a dry croissant. It's not much, but enough to fuel my body for the walk. No matter how modest, it feels like a prize or a reward. The cuisine offers simple yet restorative meals. 
robust flavors replenish depleted reserves for tomorrow's trek. Protein and carbs, the bedrock of stamina, are served liberally. Even humble ingredients become sensory feasts, revitalizing body and spirit. Each dinner, though cheap and simple, feels like a three-course symphony of salt and fat, testifying to the grit required on this path. You ingest substantial calories and you will burn them all. After walking for hours along vacant train tracks and freeways, I arrive at the albergue at the entrance of Bersianos. I treat my shoes to a well-deserved bath. These loyal hookers, my interface with the ground, are powering through their second Camino, despite the salesman warning me they would last only one. I've now reached Bersianos. And that's my alberga, La Perala. So these guys could use a good scrubbing. Come on. The hardest thing on the Camino is not the walking, but the lack of sleep. So sometimes you need your own room. And it's a great, enjoyable luxury. Crazy Barcianas. Could be down in the American West. That's where I'm going. This is where I will have drinks and dinner. Heavy clouds shape that special pre-tempest glow, an intense light that I love. I run to explore the village and take photos. The coming storm fails to manifest, still the splendid rays endure for a while. The light is off the charts crazy good. I'm not the only one to have made it to Bresianos. Part of my Camino gang is here, too. We meet at the restaurant, eating and drinking plenty, starting with a giant plate of spaghetti as a first course. We decide to tackle tomorrow's long haul to Leon together at the break of dawn. Letting go is what brought us back together. So this is just a starter. But I did need that. Okay, what's your favorite food? Main course. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost six o'clock and I'm heading off to Leon, 45 kilometers. Hey, Arsi. I know you from last year. You are here. We are moving swiftly, trying to warm our bodies against the merciless cold. The walk to Leon is long, more than 45 kilometers. 
we yearned for the sun to appear after we left in the darkness of the early morning. As soon as the sunbeams touch the ground at a slanted angle, we see life returning to all creatures and to ourselves a much needed surge of energy. Without it, there would be nothing. The sun, the giver of life and light, the shaper of moods and emotions, the friend of pilgrims. I realize in a very physical way that without the sun, there would be nothing. No life, only a cold rock hurtling across the universe. Today, I am celebrating the sun. If you're not fond of long straights, you're not going to like the meseta. Long stretches, long straight roads. A lot of nothingness, really. And yet, surprises lurk even here. We discover the most magnificent breakfast in the unlikeliest of places. Who would have expected that a Dionysian feast of sweet and salty hides in the middle of nowhere? After three hours of bracing the cold, we've earned it, and then some. We ordered so many dishes that the table risks overflowing. And we need it. Almost 50 kilometers of brisk walking in a day requires lots and lots of calories. Breakfast. It's called desayuno in Spanish, just so you know. So, what are these called again? I say it wrong. Torisha. Torisha. Yeah, good. Mm. Review, please. 10 out of 10. <laughs> That's it? I could die. <laughs> this place in the middle of nowhere has the best breakfast. <laughs> Just a little arranging. There's more. Why don't we put one, doesn't, yeah. doesn't fit on one tail. <laughs>
Please get some pilgrim juice for us. Yeah, keep us going. Forty-seven kilometers later, Leon. Here it is my place where I stay. Somewhere here, I think. My focus is entirely on the pizza, not on the cathedral. One of the many things to love about Spain, <laughs> you often get free snacks with drink orders. In this case, an amazing slice of pizza comes alongside a cerveza. So why are we doing this anyway? Why? <laughs> So this is the pad I rented right near the cathedral in the center of town and it's beautiful. Look at this. It's amazing. I love it. After all that dust, I'm going to be sleeping here like a log. I've invited the ladies over, <laughs> and now we're having some fun. <laughs> <laughs> that was taken, and you're good. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like Paracetamol, wine, yeah. and yeah. hamon. For blisters. <laughs> that, that, that's the videography I'm here for. <laughs> okay, cut. When pilgrims... <laughs> I don't know. When pilgrims drink and eat. Uh -huh. or something. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful morning in Leon. We're looking for breakfast. It's a mission. Mission possible. <laughs> This is it. This is it. <laughs> so, of all the places we could have breakfast, we, sh we chose the one in the shade and where we can't we can't eat from the table. What? 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 Whose idea was this? Anyway? Nice. Leon is a beautiful city, historic and modern at the same time, quintessentially European and very alive. Journaling with a coffee. I rented a beautiful apartment right on the central plaza to fully enjoy my rest days here although I quickly start missing the metronomic cadence of my shoes hitting the ground. The beautiful apartment is the one up there on the corner with big windows, top floor. It's amazing. 
amazing. And it's right here, the big plaza with the cathedral and everything. You know, you name it, you got it. Some of us went to a modern Asian restaurant to mix up the usual fare. The burgers are gourmet, but tiny. Do they know their clientele? Famished pilgrims. Like a, so yeah, like, big, is, it, is it real it's or is it It's very small. Big? It's like Gulliver, Gulliver's, so small. Gulliver's oh, burgers. So you're baking. I'm now a proud fifth member of a girl group. So this is where you live. I see. I see. A beautiful and crisp morning in Leon. Coffee is about to coffee. Leon days are filled with eating, socializing, drinking coffee, journaling. And sometimes journaling deteriorates into aperol spritzes. But I blame Emily and Gabrielle for that. The lingering cold is still present and it must be fought by all means necessary. I'm going to get my pilgrim pass stamped. I gotta say, this is an impressive building. The church knew how to flex their muscles and their might. So this is where we will be cooking tonight. Cooking night. <laughs> What's this? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay. So this concludes my days in Leon, where I've spent three nights. I'm now well rested, we'll group again, and I wonder where we have our next concert. So stay tuned, subscribe if you like, or leave a comment. Goodbye Leon, one of my favorite stops on the Camino, in the last bigger city before Santiago. I initially thought three rest days in Leon would be too many. So I was gonna leave early, but then I stayed all three days. And I realized I needed it, or I just enjoyed it. And also, the others are caught up. So we're now essentially that group again, which is great. 
had good fun cooking and exploring Leon. And we mostly walk by ourselves and then do something in the evening together. It's great to leave a city early in the morning with beautiful sunshine coming in sideways. I love it. There's a fork in the road after Leon. You can go the regular route, which is by the highway, or the scenic one, which is five kilometers longer or something. It's also much prettier. So of course I'm going for the visuals. I'm making a left. Leave a comment below if you're as much into cow content as I am. Sometimes you wonder, why the f am I doing this, this walking thing? Why indeed? I don't know. But then you set out to sea again, and you're like, yeah, I like it. And I don't know why, but I do. I really did pick one of the area spots to do my bocadillo with jamon, but hey, doesn't matter. No. And then the clouds made a comeback. I expected the sun and I got clouds, but I loved the spectacle of dramatic clouds before the rain. The one thing I want, the Camino keeps from me. But by now, I've sort of gotten used to it. On the long walk to Hospital de Obrigo, that's actually not the worst thing. I remember this bit as being quite punishing in the scorching sun last year. Hospital de Obrigo, 37 kilometers later. I guess I walked 37 kilometers for this. Ding, ding. Ah! 
The sangria it's gonna have a fun time finding you. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I miss so much. I so we're moving inside. Pegra menu. Oh my god, that's so I'm so excited. I was like, I've been like in the back of my head. Like, I've been letting it be so happy. Just like the The beef stew. I love it better than that. I've been in a place in a It's raining hard. And we're eating hard. The love is hard. Let me eat part That's fine. Cheesecake and not pictured um, the custard and okay, this is Vlan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this is Vlan. Yeah. Yes, you can you can walk in. It says breakfast. Why are you so happy right now? Because <laughs> you're you're not laughing. <laughs> Crossing the bridge into nothingness. <laughs> <laughs> On our way to Astoria, I think day 22, 21. Good morning. Big age. Good. Dear. I'm in the middle. Yeah. Good morning. 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 Casa de los Dios.
I'm wondering if my Camino is invalid, if I take the shortcut. Restaurants are all closed. That's why we're now looking at blisters. <laughs> Look, that's Astoria. It's all died out because you know some protest. Everything's closed. So we're cooking here. Oh my God! Look at this. This is smell the roses. Smell it. Two forces out there. <laughs> Right, I will eat all of this. Can't work with it. <laughs> Astorga, I never knew you. <laughs> yeah, say hello to my friend Andrea, who was on the Camino last year. Hi. So, no? Gabriel, say hello. What's all this mess? What's, what's all this mess here? I mean, come on. It's all right, it's part of the, uh, the pilgrimage. No, you didn't do this. Did you do this last year? No. Look at that bird in the oven. It's a bird for us, it's a big bird. Big bird. It's all like shirtless and like, like totally dressed. And they're like, it was very erotic. <laughs> Blisters be damned, and the girl group is well on its way, with me in tow. And this is what I wrote in my journal that day. Such a great group, so much affection, I love it. I don't want it to end. And yet, we'll hit Santiago in 10 days, which is kind of hard to believe. I'm loving the intensity. So stay tuned, subscribe if you must, and leave a comment below. It's a rainy day. So I'm getting coffee for the crew. That's still half asleep up there. Because it's a rainy day, we're gonna walk through the rain. We get lots of coffee before that. Egg breakfast. <laughs> Alright Astorga, that's it, you disappointed me a bit, you were so alive last year and this year everything was closed because you were protesting against something. Anyway, we had a good night anyway yesterday, so all good. This is the bit that I walked at night last time, which was very exciting and mystical. I'm very happy to see it during the daytime because it's a very beautiful leg of the Camino.
Experiencing this breathtaking landscape in the light of day is a gorgeous surprise. Last year, my friend Seamus and I embarked on an unforgettable, hallucinatory overnight walk from Astorga to the Iron Cross, determined to get there by sunrise. Rabanal is a small mountain village and the first thing we do is fill our hungry bodies with food. We need it. We then take over a corner of the albergue and mentally prepare for the snorkestra that awaits. Rabanal albergue. We'll see what it's like, but it's kind of medieval. Interesting. So we want to check in, but we want to eat something as soon as possible. We're hungry. <laughs> Eggs, pork, macaroni. <laughs> Not burger for a change and uh, takes I'm getting used to. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's new for us. This is the face of suffering. <laughs> Gabriel, are, are, you, are you ready for the. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and get my earphones out now. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> we just look over and you guys are in our. As we sit in a cafe sipping terrible coffee, I grumble about the cold. I'm an insufferable grump without sunshine. The Camino continues testing my limits. Why? 
is so rubber now, it's kind of shit. Because also this coffee isn't coffee. <laughs> and this yogurt isn't yogurt. <laughs> Me too, I saw that so now we're freezing under this thing here. Oh no, get carrot positive. And it's, <laughs> it's raining too. And I'm hearing complaints that I'm negative. I'm not negative, I'm just telling it like it is. And uh, it is as it is. And it's cold. Look at the look at the, the plants already dead. <laughs> this, these are still alive, but probably until tomorrow. So we're having dinner here this little place that has all these things. Look at here. Here they are. Pilgrims, menus. Nice. That's Garrett approved. That's 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 So the house cake oh, oh, is the it, cheesecake. Oh, it might be. <laughs> no, but you will. You're very pro, like, live your life. Yeah. I know, I just yeah. like that. Heading back to the albergue. Get up early tomorrow to go to the Iron Cross. Climb the mountain. And then on to Ponferrada. It's going to be pretty tough, 32 kilometers tomorrow. That's the albergue. And I predict a an orchestra tonight. No sleep till Brooklyn. They're discussing Talking the strategy. <laughs> What's the strategy for the night? Getting bed while it's still light. <laughs> oh yes. Thanks for delivery. Gracias. <laughs> Breakfast blister babes <laughs> at work. <laughs> Day 24. Goodbye, Robin. Now let's climb that mountain to the Iron Cross. The ascent towards the Iron Cross holds a magical, fairy tale esque quality, like stepping into the unknown. It is a trippy, almost surreal experience. The rock I deposited last year must still be there among his friends. Consider the small stone that you've been carrying, destined for the Cruz de Ferro, the Camino's highest point, the Iron Cross at the top of the Leon Mountains. And now think of what it can hold if you want to inject it with meaning. The Camino won't magically stop intrusive thoughts holding your attention hostage. On the contrary, it is likely to get worse before it gets better. That's because on the Camino, you have more time to think about things and less things to think about. With plenty of time to ruminate, your mind may go into overdrive. The trick is permitting thoughts to come and go. Although initially unsettling, you can reach a balance if you refrain from resisting the flow of consciousness. Observe the thoughts, then let them drift onward. This meditative release may reveal, in time, greater peace of mind. And when clarity seems elusive, just trust the Camino's process. Think of it as an entity caring for you, one way or another. The Camino follows its own logic. The Camino can loosely be broken up into three stages. The first phase means adapting to the intensity and finding your pace. Your mind and your body will do strange things. I call it discovery. 
During the second stage, the middle part of your walk, your mind will quiet down, shed the unnecessary, and enter a mode of intense yet effortless focus, the spiritual phase. In the final stretch, you realize that all those fixations were not that important to begin with. This is what I like to call the release. There is no shortcut to the third stage. The first two are necessary in order to reach the third. Back to the stone you carry and then release at the Iron Cross. That small stone holds symbolic, cathartic meaning. Curiously, a small stone is able to shoulder thoughts. Depositing it lightens your load. Joining other stones at the moon of the cross, it becomes part of a centuries-old ritual of release and reflection. It is no accident that this ritual takes place in the final third of the pilgrimage. That small stone plays a big part in the game of the Camino. There's a cross. Cruz de Ferro. everyone in quite a deep way especially if you're unprepared for it I think so you've carried that little rock with you for 500 kilometers and you deposit it there and you see the things other people have left I don't know it's quite an intense moment Very beautiful. How to put into words, really. Daddy's already here testing the coffee. Bo good bocadillo, she says. Surprisingly. <laughs> Thank you. 
you're unlikely to find actual answers, but you'll also discover that's not the point. What the Camino can do, however, is soothe your nervous system into some form of enduring tranquility. The stone and some thoughts stay at the Iron Cross. One way or another, through deep immersion, the Camino lends clarity to issues once obscured, even if solutions don't magically appear. The Camino grants not answers, but perspective. It offers insights, not remedies. From afar, the house of cards that is our life takes on new dimensions. Examine and release what no longer serves you and reshuffle the deck. Keep setting one foot forward and then the next and the next. Some of your thoughts remain at the Iron Cross and you continue on your walk. It's crazy beautiful around here. And here's the sun again. You can't tell from the video, but it's a pretty steep decline here. I have a nearly obsessive need to photograph things in order to fully grasp and mentally process them. Taking photos and videos is an indispensable part of how I make sense of life. The camera is my window into the world, for better or worse. I realized much mental processing happens months after walking. As if the immediate sensation is so overwhelming, I delay parts of it. Creating videos and narrating this experience serves as necessary delayed processing. It is how I am storyteller. It's also a subtle way for the Camino to anchor me into the moment. That's the small village of Acebo, where last year I got bedbugs in an albergue. This is where we had lunch. Yeah, I was watching it. It's like the next part. I, I, I yeah. tried doing it, and I just will not stop speaking. Why is there no sun? I want the sun. What's Look, there's a, there's a little bit of sun. <sighs> just a smidge. Here we go. Yes, that's what I want. Wow. Yeah. This feels very trippy, I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> it's incredible. Look how the sun is. I didn't have these words fully fleshed out as I walked, mind you. Far from it. They took shape much later, as the sensory overload of the pilgrimage settled and the deeper meanings began to crystallize. Almost like decoding mysteries sensed in the body before the brain can distill their significance. I often dream of the Camino. With my videos, I aim to encapsulate the Camino spirit, to convey its actual felt experience as authentically as possible, though my lens is inevitably personal. I recognize that not everybody has the opportunity to walk the Camino, yeah. <laughs> but I urge those who sense even the faint spark to light that candle. That initial flicker of interest sparked a transformative adventure for me. That first spark I once felt turned into growing wildfire. But it's easy to get caught up in the planning phase, consuming tons of information and watching numerous videos. This can make you a spectator of your own adventure. Action is the key. The truth is, if you don't take the first step, you might never do it. With a pair of legs, you can walk it. And that's all you need to know. If you feel the urge to walk growing within you, give in to the temptation. I didn't understand my own growing desire to walk, but I followed it nonetheless, and the reasons became clear in time. But first, you must take that initial step, literally or symbolically. 
Arriving on the Camino, you strip away all pretenses, carrying only what you need on your back. Among fellow travelers, you're all starting afresh, unknown to each other. No one is aware of your darkness, of your brightness, or of the things inside you. It's a clean slate for everyone. Tres canes en las vacaciones que a la tres tres niñas tres tres chicas de la camino. What are you doing swimming? I'm going to be sad if I don't. Wow. Yeah, for sure. Do Respect. It. Look at the perfect circle. There's Addy over there. He's swimming in the river of. Molina Seca, whatever it's called. The experience is a delicious mix of connection and solitude. It's an opportunity to self-reflect, to connect, and to try to figure things out. The Camino provides what you need, often in unexpected forms, through the people you encounter. 6 p.m. We're barely getting in. It's been a long one. Where is the apartment? Panferrada. It's a good start of Panferrada. Not bad, not bad. <laughs> Hello, castle. <laughs> Welcome to our humble abode. Wow. This place is so nice. This is so nice. Should we go to bed? Can we stay here for a TV? Do we really want to go to Santiago? Two bathrooms. Yeah. Check this out. This is nice. Right? Yeah. I'm trying to make it better. Oh, Alex. Well, <laughs> No. And nobody noticed I walked out with it. Yeah. <laughs> so now you're making me wear the loot. It's like her, like, she's like, and you're like, oh no. Panferrada. It's lively. Yes. One of these. Tinto de verano. <laughs> no, wait for this. Hello. I like it. It's like wide eyes and then the flash like Conferrada. It's a lively little town. It's a nice one. <laughs> oh, it's raining. Where's home? Where's home? Home is that way. <laughs> Club is convening right here. That's not nice in my house. Impressive breakfast. <laughs> Impressive sunshine. <laughs> we'll go hard and then I like have a camping yeah. site. And Tara is swim. taking a day off for two. <laughs> it's not goodbye, Tara. Please confirm on video. It's not goodbye. All right. We'll see you. I, we'll see you around. I, I'm moving to Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> what is the mystery town? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Leaving this great apartment go for it, go for it. in Panferrada. Yeah, they didn't even want a prescription. <laughs> <laughs> Spain is so yeah, useful. Yeah. Leaving this great apartment go for it, go for it. in Panferrada. Yes. Leaving Panferrada. This town was good to us. Had a good time. 
Nice cute town. Bye bye. Leaving Panferrada along the river. It's a beautiful day. Although Tara might have to stay behind a day or two. Her blisters are taking their toll and her body's just a bit exhausted. I say she should just take the bus to catch up with us. I think the Camino is more about the experience that you have with your friends rather than making sure you cover every kilometer. I think it will work itself out. And it's funny how those priorities shift over time. The integrity of the group becomes more important than other considerations. Which makes sense because you spend so much time with each other. It's very intense and fun and the highs and the lows, it's all there. So I'm hoping she can catch up with us sooner or later and that she feels better. It's one of those Camino things. You kind of have to keep going. So you kind of have to adhere to a schedule and you can't just wing it. I mean, you can, but if you're a bigger group and you're looking for accommodation later in the day, it makes it harder. So you sort of have to strike a balance between planning and just living day by day. But that's one of those things you deal with while on the Camino. Twenty-three kilometers ahead. It's not a long one, not a short one, just an average one, I would say. On my way to Villa Franca. When is digestive time? It's always digestive time. So many sad croissants on the Camino. These things deserve to live. walking straight into a thunderstorm. It's hot and it's about to bang. But there are a few things I like more than a thunderstorm. Do you see that lightning? It's coming. One special thing about the Camino is the constant forward motion. You just keep walking every day, day in and day out. You can barely remember the name of the town you're in before you leave it again. You just keep going west. It's like a magnet that pulls you. And that also forces you to be very much in the moment, in the now, because you don't really have time to ruminate or think about other things than how to get to the next place. That may be taxing on your body and your mind sometimes, but it's also very, very healthy, if you ask me. So even a thunderstorm that's about to hit you, kind of, it's like, yeah, okay. Just keep walking. I feel like I dropped acid this morning. Look at this. The thunderstorm is about to hit me. Into the storm I go.
kind of escalated quickly. The storm is all around me, but literally around me for some reason. I'm barely getting wet from the rain. I just see the beautiful effects like lightning, wind. And thunder. Will I make it dry or not? I don't know. We'll see about that. It's really pouring now. I'm standing on a tree that gives me a little bit of shelter from the rain, but you know, I just wait it out a little bit. It's raining quite hard, but it's going to pass. And it's beautiful. I need one of these quite badly. Have not lunch. But this will do the trick, kind of, anyway. So there's our hotel for the night. It has a bar. Villa Franca. It's a town one must visit <laughs> because there's water and there's houses. There's things, things to do, people to see. Looking for where we will eat, drink. Yes. Oh, like is... people. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just in time for yeah. appetizer. <laughs> When can we know? Like for example, give a specific example of being promised rolls. Yeah. Call you your you uh, chindi run or something, still, like a local special. <laughs> it comes nice. with a cookie. <laughs> it's vaguely Edinburgh-ish. <laughs> hey Emily, what does this town remind you of? What other town? <laughs> but I don't know <laughs> what you're getting at. <laughs> Edinburgh. 
No, I actually, ah, come on. I actually don't think so. Oh, Jesus. I take right. that back. I delete, I delete this, this movie. This movie is bad. <laughs> <laughs> It is with great dismay that we learn the only cafe in town is closed. We're really looking forward to this, but now we have to walk to the next one, about an hour away, maybe a little less if we're lucky. Almost 10 kilometers in, finally, coffee, breakfast, it's important. I see my... 
Yeah. Okay. Pilgrims. I see them. Uh, yeah, that's good. What do you want? The magic juice. Let's see if it's good. It's good. I like this a lot, actually. Don't eat first. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I suggest you enable subtitles, as it might be easier to follow what I'm about to try to convey. The Greeks had two words for time, chronos and kairos. Chronos contains the linear, sequential progression of time, quantified in the relentless march of minutes and hours, as dictated by the rhythm of a ticking clock. On the other hand, kairos represents those qualitative instances that are imbued with profound significance, brimming with the intensity of the present moment and teeming with potential. These are not mere points on the continuum of time, but rather they are moments that transcend and prolong time. A 30-day walk initially lures you into a deceptive sense of abundant, almost infinite time until the accumulating kilometers and waning days compress the once endless path with an urgency that is sobering. This illusion of endless chronos creates a false impression of having an oversupply of minutes and hours. As the final third of the journey dawns, you find yourself incredulous, counting down the remaining days to the end, the hourglass nearing its inevitable emptiness. This angst arises from viewing time solely as chronos, seeking only to measure and budget each moment. Yet the Camino also offers a deep encounter with Kairos. It's when the Camino creates space for serendipity, conversation, wonder and insight that transcend the passage of time. You step into a parallel dimension, a slowed down timescape. Just as your march through space decelerates, so does your movement through time. Breakfast number two. Don't eat first. <laughs> Red shoes from a big climb. Because my socks are dry. She's audacious. You can actually hire this little guy to take you up the mountain. As you walk the Camino, you undergo an almost imperceptible transition from Kronos to Kairos, a shift where your days begin to unfurl in unique ways. This leads to a mental recalibration. Rather than viewing time as grains of sand slipping away, you begin to experience it as hundreds of opportunities given to you to enjoy that great gift called life. Each moment glistens with potential when you let go of the ticking clock and enter the timeless now. It's an 800 meter climb. I'm glad there's some shade. Whew. I'm sweating. It's hot, it's steep. Like life itself, the Camino is finite, a memento of mortality, a celebration of the ephemeral. But this disquieting realization also serves as a liberating force, an encouragement to fully inhabit each moment and to embrace the now. As we wander through the landscape, the Camino seems to whisper, do not only pass through sequential time, but allow time to flow through you. The Camino's ultimate destination is not only Santiago, but a profound recognition of our own impermanence. With every step, we walk towards understanding that time is not just a metric, 
but that we are intricately woven into the fabric of time itself. Like life, the Camino is not just a passage through space, but a pilgrimage through time. We learn to not merely exist in time, but to come alive within it, to bask in the unrepeatable splendor of the now, the only place where life is truly lived. We're entering Galicia. It's a beautiful piece of Spain. It teaches us to walk with presence, to embrace time not as a quantity to spend, but as a quality to immerse in and to embrace the beauty of the ephemeral present. It is here, in the now, that life unfolds in all its richness and beauty. The Camino is a journey that, for a moment, transforms our perception of time. Osibero, top of the mountain. Let's see if we find an albergue to stay and find some to eat. So after this achievement climb, mm -hmm. Emily got us two Tintoranos. I'm very, very proud of your work. <laughs> <laughs> Food for climbing. Mm. It's not a curtain, it's the laundry drying. And this is the view from that hotel. El Sobrero. Cute little mountain village that's expecting another thunderstorm. El Sobrero, after a nice Shower from the clouds above. The climb to Osebrero was challenging yet rewarding. We indulged in big, delightful meals and made the acquaintance of fellow travelers during dinner. I sent an audio message to my good friends who are getting married in Berlin. In order to reach Santiago, I will miss their wedding by four days. It was an extremely difficult decision, one I've wrestled with since departing Saint-Jean-Pied-de-Port. Ultimately, it became clear I can only choose one path. The Camino provides, but it also takes away. The sense of failing my friends is a source of regret, but I'm resolved to keep moving. The Camino has me completely under its spell, and the world beyond it has gradually faded away, much like an old discarded shell. I know I must continue walking. It's like a magnet pulling me. So stay tuned, let me know your thoughts below. I really like the dialogue I have with some of you. Ten past six. Day 27 of my Camino Frances brings a glorious sunrise over the Osibreira mountains and the birds are here to celebrate it. Just listen. As I watch the orange glow dance across the treetops, I'm reminded that this splendor too is ephemeral. You will never again be as young as you are today, so why not walk the Camino soon? Life is full of unexpected turns, career shifts, family changes, 
health challenges, none of which come with any guarantees for the future. By embracing the beauty and immediacy of the present, you drink from the delicious wellspring of the now. You won't know what's missing from your life until you try it. Surprises and mysteries fill the world, breaking the mold of our expectations. The only way to understand them is by living through them. Don't let fear hold you back, but embrace action. There's a world of difference between merely thinking and actively doing. And remember, even if you stumble, you pick up something precious along the way. The initial lesson of the Camino? To decide to take it on. It's a call to the young at heart, to those with the fire and energy to delve into its mysteries. I have come to perceive the Camino as more than merely a path. It appears to be a sentient entity, endowed with enigmatic powers and a mind of its own. It interacts with pilgrims, overturning their expectations, fostering introspection, and generally operating in enigmatic ways. The Camino seems to possess a mystical sentience, much like the animated landscapes in Hayao Miyazaki's movies Princess Mononoke, or Spirited Away. Spirits seem to dwell within the trees, rivers, rocks and meadows, with animals as quiet witnesses. Breakfast. As a literal force of nature, the Camino, with its commanding presence, invites us to yield to its kind intent, emitting a supernatural glow and sharing wisdom with those who approach with receptivity. In heeding its direction, we can tap into life's profound insights. This meandering route of self-discovery stands as a tribute to the potency of nature and its effect on the human spirit. Sometimes you focus so much on reaching your daily destination, especially if it's a long day of 40 kilometers or something. But just like the point of the music is the making of the music, the point of walking is the walk. So just focus on the walk itself and not getting there or being there. Embracing the Camino's slow-moving rhythm allows pilgrims to find synchrony with the subtle splendor of the natural world. Beyond the walking trail, the Camino is a mentor and conduit for self-realization and communion with the environment. It serves as an animate guide, enlightening us to life's fundamental truths with wisdom that eclipses any human mentor. It is through a childlike openness that we can uncover the Camino's hidden secrets. I think that tree is about 800 years old or so. And uh, was here last year. And it will be here next year. Another long after I'm gone. I've encountered comments that mention the poetic and philosophical dimensions in my videos, which I find intriguing for several reasons. My photographs undeniably possess a poetic quality, a quality I actively seek. It's the essence of my art, my craft, my gift, if you will. However, I have not consciously explored the realms of poetry or philosophy. 
I have a feeling there's going to be rain again, maybe even thunderstorm. We'll see. The comments were flattering and unexpected, as my videos were not intended to be perceived in such a manner. It was through processing the Camino and immersing myself in reading, thinking, then writing and narrating the videos that these elements inadvertently came to light. The Camino itself unearthed these aspects within me, a transformation I hardly noticed as it unfolded. In other words, the Camino gently nudged me in this direction, and it goes without saying that I take great pleasure in it. And yet, it's easy to assume this journey is a prolonged period of introspection and contemplation. More often, you're engrossed in the immediacy of being and doing, which is good since action dispels overthinking. While the Camino does inspire profound thoughts and reflections, they are sporadic rather than continuous. Your mind tends to be absorbed by the immediate environment and the tasks at hand. It is within these moments of simple existence and activity that the Camino's true essence comes out. Profound insights may occur, but they typically arise during tranquil interludes post-walk, when there's time to rest and to ponder, or even during the months after the walk. And the rain is here. Thunder too. Lightning. Imminent. Approaching Saria. Another half hour or so. Let's see if I can make it before the big rain hits. There's a little goat that got away. The journey reshapes your mindset, mirroring the changing landscapes. And it's often in moments of stillness that you grasp the full depth of your experiences. Thus, while the Camino invites contemplation, it equally offers the chance to be fully present, to relish the journey and the beauty of the world and the people around you. Saria, here you are. 40 kilometers later, I got here before the rain. Pension Escalinata, I remember those guys. They know their stuff. A great omelet too. A typical hostel. Saria, the view. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Hello. It tastes like brownie. <laughs> the two day long walkers are back in town <laughs> eating, no, drinking. They're drinking. drinking. Deserve it. <laughs> yeah, really. 51 kilometers, no? Yeah. I need a bottle of wine after that. It's actually all 52 mine. technically. Well <laughs> They deserve every bite. I kind of love this place for its great greasy food. The owner is just a cool guy who makes great omelets. Okay, Saria, that's it. And from here on out will be all the new pilgrims who want to do the Camino in a couple days. Some of the mundane thoughts that you actually spend most of your time on. Welcome to the Camino de Santiago, where the deep philosophical questions of life meet the everyday conundrums of a pilgrim's journey. Did I accidentally gift my t-shirt to the last albergue? Or is it playing hide and seek in my backpack? The road to enlightenment is paved with caffeine cravings. 
How many more steps to that life-giving first coffee of the day? As we march past those cute cows, one can't help but wonder, what's going through those cow brains seeing this parade of backpackers? What items would get removed from my backpack for my next Camino? Ancient pilgrims managed without GPS, yet here we are, overpacking overthinkers, relying on faraway data centers and synthetic fabrics to save the day. My cookie supplies are dwindling. Will the next village be my cookie oasis? It's a zoo out here. Lots and lots of people waiting for stamps and whatnot. And for those walking the Camino in reverse, are you time travelers or do you just love saying Buen Camino hundreds of times per day? Alas, such is the Camino, where big skies and open roads lead to thoughts both deep and inane. We are now deep into Galicia, walking across a landscape as verdant as Ireland's. Here, the similarities with Ireland are palpable, rooted in a rich tapestry of shared Celtic heritage. I've been looking at the map and thinking about accelerating hard in order not to miss the wedding after all. I would have to do a couple of 40, 50, 60 kilometer days in a row. Then going to Santiago, calling it a day there, and flying back to Berlin. It would also mean that the girl group I'm part of gets disbanded. But I don't know. Just these thoughts. 22, 23 kilometers later, the bridge into Porto Marine. Even if it was a short walk, this is deserved, is it not? So I guess that's some. Exploring the back roads of Porto Marine a little bit. Have you ever pushed yourself to the absolute limit? Well, get ready, because today I'm about to start one of the most incredible adventures of my life. Little do I know, as I drink my morning coffee in Porto Marine, that in the next 24 hours, I'll walk almost 100 kilometers to Santiago de Compostela. But before diving into this epic journey, I admit to feeling a tinge of judgment towards the bucket list pilgrims who rush through the Camino in a mere five days. Keep watching, because this is going to be a wild ride. And Saria is the point on the Camino where the number of pilgrims just about doubles, it feels like. Because you can finish the Camino by walking from Saria to Santiago. And you can tell the new arrivals by they look so fresh and clean. 
and they move a lot less deliberately, more slowly and uh, less decisively. Also, they don't have a farmer's tan like we do. It's funny, you can just tell very easily. I'm not judging, but I'm judging. At the core, my unease with the new pilgrims lies not in the fact that they walk only portions of the Camino. Not everyone has the luxury of time to complete the entire journey, and each pilgrim walks their own unique path after all. What provokes my judgmental tendencies is their disruption of the camaraderie forged among those of us who have come this far. Even if one doesn't know every fellow traveler intimately, the arrival of all these newcomers feels like an intrusion of sorts into our established fellowship on the road. It's an innately human reaction, albeit one that I, and likely many others, should transcend with greater magnanimity. This tiny little place, unassuming as is so often the case. But dear lord, it's delicious. I'll be gone this meatballs in this small tapas place in Palestine. I feel like I keep moving. I'm not spent. And after this, I have more energy. So just walking through Palace del Rey. So I'll keep on walking today, like I thought I would. And everyone else is also off on their own thing, it seems. So it was in the air, I think. But uh, I think this is the end of the road for a girl group. It was a great one. But uh, for now, I think this seems to be like a bit of a break or an end. We'll see. Maybe we'll meet again in Santiago or Finisterre if I end up going there. But yeah, that's how it goes on the Camino. Onwards.
I'm trying something new because the coffee con leche are often a bit lacking. So I try espresso with condensed milk. We'll see. <laughs> Ja. Die das ist alle richtig schön. Melide. Davide. <lacht> Ach so, okay. Von wieder aus nicht mehr wieder. is looking like another thunderstorm is about to hit soon. It's happening. It's coming. It is now 4.30 in the afternoon. I've decided to just keep on walking, see what happens. It's been 40 kilometers so far. I'm about 55 from Santiago. I really don't know. Either I just keep walking or I take an albergue somewhere. I'm quite amazed actually that my body allows me to do this. Quite grateful actually because no blisters, no pain, no nothing. I just keep walking for days and days. And the uh, body doesn't complain at all. Quite amazing. It's great. 51 to go. Hmm. Not sure what to do. I'll just keep on walking. Now it's 7 in the evening, 7 p.m. as they say. I'm still walking. I've been walking for about 12 hours, 11. So now I decided I just keep on walking, see what happens. I'm wondering whether once you get into a big walking habit <laughs> to see if you can take it as far as you possibly can, maybe hit Santiago tonight. That would mean I did one tenth of the entire Camino in a day, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to, or if that's wise, or you know, I just I just see what happens. It would not at all be what I thought it would be, but that's typical Camino, you know. It never gives you what you want, but what you need, and maybe this is one of those things. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's intense, as you can imagine. 51 kilometers and counting. My body's doing fine. I'll see how far this takes me and what happens. Walking into the sunset for once. Usually you don't do that because by afternoon you're in the albergue. But it's nice to walk into the sunset.
the thing I complained about earlier, that it's such a zoo with all the new pilgrims. Well, if you walk in the afternoon, or even later, you'll be all by yourself. There's literally nobody on the Camino. Like Jim said, if your body calls for water, give it beer. It's definitely true in the Camino. It's almost a full moon. I'd say that's a good sign. Light my way, moon. Light my way. One for the road. This may seem kind of hard to believe, but uh, I took the same wrong turn after Azura than I did last year. There must be some bad signage or something. Come on, can't be me. Beautiful walk. No one around. Getting dark. It's a bit mysterious. I'm in the dark woods. There's an almost full moon. It's gonna be interesting. And it's just such a totally different experience. It's crazy. I mean, it was this social thing, and now it's this radically solo thing at night Ooh. walking through the pitch black forest is definitely special and uh, lugubrious and slightly bit scary and then when I passed a you know, farm, there were two dogs that actually attacked me and even bit me. One in each leg. More to scare me off and that they did. So no bleeding. But uh, yeah, it was quite an intense moment. Anyway, it's now past 11 and uh, everything is closed in the little villages and I kind of need something to drink, but yeah, all right. Moving on. It's now almost two in the morning. What accompanies me is the barking of the dogs. They're just burning the midnight oil with their barking. All of them. <laughs> Just so many dogs barking. Well, as long as they don't attack me like those other two dogs, I'm fine. Anyway, so it's about 20 kilometers to Santiago, which means about four hours, because I'm not walking that fast anymore. It's a long trip. A long trek. 
it's been 16 hours now that I've been walking. That also means that I should get into Santiago as the sun rises. That should be pretty cool. Provided I make it. <laughs> it's not a given yet. Another four hours ain't easy. But so far, so good. My body's hurting a little bit, but not bad at all. I guess it's run as high or hike as high. Just keep moving. And the motion itself is what propels you forward. It's interesting how as you walk through the pitch black woods, your senses are all on high alert because you just don't know. You feel your eyes trying to go into overdrive and make sense of little information that there is. Every noise triggers an alert in your brain. It's dark. And without the moonlight, this would not be possible at all. I don't even have a flashlight, except the small one on my iPhone. But I need the battery. I'd rather use the moonlight to give me some information as to where I need to walk. I'm whispering so the animals can't hear me. <laughs> I've walked enough for now. I have a feeling that it is indeed enough. Then Santiago is the destination. Whereas on my first Camino, Santiago was a very important stop, but my destination was Finisterre. So that will be different this time around. Santiago is the end of the road. My Camino map app died just as the signage got really confusing and you can't see the yellow arrows under yellow lighting. So I just didn't know where to go. So now I'm on the wrong track. I will rejoin soon, but it's very annoying, I have to say. Just, oh God, why? Okay, so I made it this far. I guess I'll also make it to the center of town, the cathedral. I'm pretty beat, obviously, but yes, we made it. Look at my face. So, I'm almost there. So, here it is, the destination. Look how empty it is, this time of day. Give it two hours, I will be full. Anyway, can't even formulate a coherent thought, let alone a deep one. So I'll just sit here a bit and see what's going on. So I'm on the plaza near the cathedral. Lots of people here greeting each other. The big zoo of pilgrims. 
happy that they made it. I'm here too, and by myself, which is new and interesting. I can observe what's going on. I've taken a nap in the shower and I feel much more human again because uh, I was in bad shape when I got here two hours ago. But now it's much better. She asked for a comparison to the first Camino that I did a year ago. I mean, comparing is always not a good idea. They were both great. I love them both in their own different way. I'm glad I did this one. It was quite an experience. It was intense and funny, beautiful. I filmed a lot more than I used to. I think I'm done for now with uh, Camille Frances. I mean, I've walked enough. So, you know, obviously I'm kind of beat, so that's my point of view right now. But yeah, what a great adventure. Probably do another Camino at some point because I like the new. That's the one thing that the second one didn't have quite so much. The surprises of the new, you know, when you don't know what to expect. It's great. That's what travel is all about. But even though doing a second one is just as great. All right, over and out. As I record my thoughts after completing the grueling 24 hour, 97 kilometer trek, my voice carries a mix of exhaustion and triumph. With each kilometer, I unearthed a hidden well of resilience within myself. The physical toll was immense, but it was the mental battle that truly put me to the test. Yet, a quiet determination and a burning desire to prove myself propelled me forward. I had covered more ground in a single day than most pilgrims do in four, and I had done it solo. However, that moment of victory was tinged with a deep sense of loneliness. Arriving in Santiago after that incredible feat, I stood in the vast square before the cathedral, acutely aware of the absence of my Camino family. These were the people with whom I had shared countless moments of beauty, laughter and intensity along the way. We had supported each other through the tough times, celebrated the small victories and forged an unbreakable bond that can only be formed through shared adversity. Their absence left a deep void, a bittersweet feeling amidst the superficial sense of accomplishment. Without them by my side, reaching Santiago felt somewhat hollow. There was no one to hug, no one to shed tears with, no one to share in the overwhelming emotions of completing something so monumental together. Traversing an entire country on foot is no small feat, and having my Camino family there to celebrate that milestone would have made it all the more meaningful. They had become a part of me, and I knew that no matter where life took us, we would always be connected by the incredible journey we shared. And then, beneath the loneliness, a profound emptiness consumed me. I had my cake and ate it too. I completed the Camino and would attend my friend's wedding. Two seemingly irreconcilable goals at the outset. I was certain I'd have to sacrifice one but I refused to yield. I craved both, and I achieved both. But at what price? In grasping for everything, did I truly savor anything? Did I betray my Camino companions with this mad solo trek? Did I somehow desecrate the spirit of the Camino? But could I bear disappointing my old friends by missing their wedding? Cherishing friendships deeply, this decision has tormented me since Saint-Jean-Pied-de-Port. I struggled to balance both. I saw disturbing parallels to my obsessive need to capture and immortalize moments. A similar obsession to cling to things seems to have driven me here. Did this fixation blind me to the Camino's teachings? Was it ego propelling me? The heroic odyssey, the anticipated glory of a surprise wedding appearance? Did I defy or defile the Camino's unspoken law of surrender 
of relinquishing control, of accepting its offerings, only to seize back control? Did I learn anything at all? The Camino's persistent hold on my thoughts offers hope that lessons were indeed imparted, but they are elusive, demanding attention and understanding. This ambivalent puzzle may forever remain unsolved. Hence, my philosophical musings about the Camino are perhaps problematic. Am I a false prophet? Ultimately, the void left by my absent friends in that triumphant moment poignantly underscored what matters most. The bonds we forge, the love we share, the growth we undergo. The Camino, in all its splendor and intensity, had given me that, and so much more. It illuminated that the true worth of any journey is not in the destination, but in the souls we encounter and the experiences we share. And perhaps, just perhaps, my solitary arrival, the consequence of ego, was the crucial lesson I needed to embrace. Be that as it may, as one journey ended, another began. Arriving in Santiago, just in time to catch a plane to Berlin, I surprised my friends at their wedding, celebrating a milestone in their lives. Seeing their faces light up made the crazy 100-kilometer walk worthwhile. Camera in hand, I captured the day's special moments, because that's what I do. Thrilled to reunite with another group of dear friends. But the journey doesn't end there. I'm already planning my next Camino, starting in May from Saint-Jean-Pied-de-Port. The trail's call is irresistible, despite my hesitation upon arrival in Santiago. Unfinished business, perhaps. If I stubbornly refuse to learn on my second Camino, I'll just walk it again, listening to its lessons. This time, I'll be joined by Bruce from Canada, a connection born from YouTube comments that sparked a deep conversation. The Camino community thrives on and off the trail. The Camino ignites new passions and ideas. For me, it sparked a desire to explore the profound topics encountered during and after the walk. I started creating Camino meditations videos, delving into philosophy, psychology, life itself really. A creative urge I can't ignore, a longing to share insights gained on the trail. Alongside the videos, I'm launching a Substack newsletter, bringing the story to life in written form. Link below, but bear with me as it's still in its early stages. I'm also excited to experiment with new ways of visualizing my experiences. Raw videos from the trail, capturing unfiltered moments, posted from wherever I happen to be on the Camino. Quite different from the more polished episodes you're used to. The Camino's auditory landscape, once an afterthought, now begs exploration. Imagine an ASMR walk, a day's journey through sound and imagery. It's like making movies with my ears. An experiment that may fail, but I must try. But first, I'll compile all 16 previous episodes into one epic, feature-length movie. A significant undertaking that will encapsulate the journey beautifully. Thank you for following along until here. Our exchange means a lot to me. I can't wait to hear your thoughts on these ideas. Subscribe if you want to join me on these new adventures. The Camino keeps calling and I'm ready to answer, pushing limits, making connections, finding inspiration and, hopefully, learning lessons. Walk with me on this ongoing journey of discovery, both on the trail and within ourselves. And so, my friends, that's my Camino de Santiago story. A tale of resilience, self-discovery, laughter and the incredible power of the human spirit. And sometimes of the ego trying to have its way. May it inspire you to embrace your own adventures, test your limits and find the insights awaiting you on your personal journey. Remember, the true value of any journey lies not in the destination, but in the people we meet and the experiences we share. So keep walking, keep exploring and keep growing. The world is waiting for you.